Today's episode of the Goldcast is sponsored by C.J. Beathard Injuries. Are you a backup quarterback that wants to get a starting shot and maybe maybe win in glorious fashion? Then you should take up the position of C.J. Beathard's backup. And right around about midway, going towards midway, towards the end of the season, there's a good chance he's going to go down. And then you're going to come in. And you're going to be badass. And you're going to win in glorious fashion. So if you're a backup quarterback looking for a job, looking for a starting position, why don't you apply for C.J. Beathard's backup today? Now, Raymond, before we get started, why don't you let them know, where can they find us? You can like us at Facebook.com slash The Goldcast, and you can also subscribe to us via iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher under the same moniker of The Goldcast. Like, subscribe, and comment, because we love to hear from you. Yeah. All right, here we go. Lots to get into. We weren't here last week, and I feel like we might have dodged the biggest bullet ever, but you know what? This is the gold cast. You guys are here. You're in it for the money. At least I hope you are. And if you have some of that money, please give it to us. You're in it for the money. So we're going to talk about last week's game going into this week's game. So much to get into. So much to talk about. It is now past the halfway mark. And as we do every year, Raymond and I are going to begin to dissect the NFL playoffs. Unfortunately, one more year without the beautiful, the bold, the red and gold, but hopefully that'll change soon. But of course, before we begin, as always, the gold cast intro. Let's get busy. San Francisco, are you ready? ready? This is the gold cast. Boom. Welcome to another edition of the gold cast. We are the voice of the Bay. I'm your host, Rudy Suisse III. And with me is my brother, my co-host, Raymond Talese the first, baby. Boom. In the place to be. Gold cast. Another gold cast to step to. Here we go. Bam. The gold cast is here. We're ready. We're live and direct coming at you. We're bringing guns to knife fights. So, Raymond, all right, let's get into this. Oh, man. All right, so first of all, the reason we didn't have a gold cast is because last week was the annual San Francisco Halloween boat party. I made my eighth appearance in nine years. And when we do the boat party, unfortunately, I cannot gold cast. Which probably for Raymond and I, we probably dodged the biggest bullet ever. Because in my opinion, I watched that entire game. And then sadly put on a costume and then went onto a boat. And uh, drank my sadness away. But Raymond, I do believe without a doubt... That was probably the most humiliating loss I have seen this decade for the 49ers. It was the kind of ending where if you're watching it on local television, and luckily I didn't have to see that on local television because I live in Los Angeles. I flew back after the boat a couple days later. But I feel like on local local news, on the local news, like corny sports broadcasts, when they play that final play, when our backup center chucked the ball over Beathard's head and he ran around and it looked like we were watching like a, a clip from uh, Pop Warner football. It was like the, it was, I felt like I was watching the uh, the Redwood City 49ers and not the San Francisco 49ers. Props to Pop Warner. I felt like the music would be, and, and then the, all the, all the broadcasters would laugh and chuckle at what a silly play that was. That was, so humiliating. I buried my face in my hands. And Pete, Pete Zimmer, our uh, our co-host, he comes on from time to time. A Raiders aficionado, diehard Warriors and San Francisco Giants fan. Yeah, I don't understand that either, but that's what it is. And he was sitting next to me. We were at his house, and he was laughing. He was laughing uncontrollably as he saw me sigh. I just went, <sighs> and I just rubbed my face in my hands because my face hurt it actually hurt from that play and we weren't able to talk about it but i felt like we dodged a bullet but let's relive it real fast raymond give me 
just some of your thoughts, and then I'll come back. I'll come back in, and we'll, we'll review this week's game. But let's let's recap first the week that we missed and the uh, the first of our what I have dubbed our four garbage bowls. This was garbage bowl one was against the Cardinals with an opportunity to uh, match them instead of getting swept. Tell me your thoughts on that game. How brutal was it for you? It was as disappointing as you can possibly get because this was a game I expected to win. And by all accounts, it looked like we were going to win. But, you know, I got really nervous in the fourth quarter because our team has given up games in the fourth quarter this year. It's in, in some cases, it's a kind of been there's been some games this year which have been the inverse of last year, whereas last year we were the team that was behind playing, fighting back and trying to sustain a game winning drive at the end and coming up short. And as a result, losing multiple games, five straight of three points or less. And this year, some of our close games have resulted in us having the lead and then giving it up at the end because the defense can't close them, close them out. And conversely, the offense couldn't sustain drives to give the defense a break and keep the offense off, keep the opposing offense off the field. So a combination of both of those things. And to watch us do that again to a team that, to be honest, in my opinion, looks is completely inferior on the offensive side of the football. They don't run as well as us. They don't pass as well as us. They have a rookie quarterback. The only thing they do have that's better than us is they have a pass rush. And that showed up both times in both contests, something that we don't have very much at all, although it finally showed up in this last game, which we'll get to. But before we do, um, it's it was just this game was like we had talked about this in the last cast where it's like, hey, this is a stretch here. We can actually pull out some wins and, you know, start to regain some dignity before the season ends and actually you know, move up in the draft so that we're not stuck at the bottom of the draft. I know some people would love us to sit there and grab, what's his name, Joey Bosa's brother, Nick Bosa. But I personally, it's, you don't want to be in that draft position year in and year out. There's another team that does that, and their name is the Cleveland Browns. You don't want to be in that position. Things aren't going good if you're in that position. And in a season like this, you certainly don't want to continue to head towards that trajectory. You want to get better. You want to start winning games. You want to start gelling. The offense is actually playing really well. I still, th- I think they're playing better than they did last year because we're jumping out to early scores. We're sustaining some of those scores. And in seldom cases, you know, we're, we've closed out a couple games, either by holding up an opponent like we should have or in, in you know Oakland's case blowing them straight out of the water but as far as this game's concerned it was um I don't know if it's the worst for me but I definitely put it up there because I was like we got to beat this team I was like the last one was a fluke win this one we've got it and it looked like we had it and then boom and Beathard gave up the ball which gave them you know a drive to come right back and put themselves in the game all they needed was two scores and then we had a center that was playing backup that couldn't even hand the ball off correctly and his reaction kind of said it all kind of sitting on his ass and upset with himself and yeah that's 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 how I would feel too if I had a blunder like that it's it's different like it's different from last year where we were like I said we were the team coming from behind trying to sustain a game winning drive and then coming up short that's an easier pill to swallow than being the team that gives it up either by mostly by self-inflicted wounds and stupid blunders like like that, like just ruining the snap to, to ruin any shot you have. So now you have no play. You have no play whatsoever. So, so yeah, that was hugely disappointing. I'm actually glad we didn't cast because I don't want to talk about that shit. <laughs> 100%. So here's the thing, too. Here's, here's, you, know what, you, know what, you know the part that it hurt the most? You brought the Cleveland Browns. This did not feel or look like 49ers football. Like you mentioned, there's 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 a sense of dignity being in the hunt. You know, the Kyle Shanahan's lost seven games by three points or less. He's the only coach in NFL history to do that. What does it mean? Absolutely nothing. But still, it gives us a sense of dignity. There's a dignity in those losses. And to and so even though we lost, it's so frustrating. At least we're in the hunt. And then this game that carnival circus ending 
Again, we look like the Redwood City 49ers, the San Bruno Rams, the San Mateo Bulldogs. Name your Pop Warner team. Uh, it, it, we look like them, and it hurt. It hurt bad. And it it just, it was a, it, there was just no dignity in it. It was humiliating. It was absolutely humiliating. But it's over. I'm glad it's over. Anything you want to say about it? Because I'm done. I'm done. Let's move on to the good stuff. Great. Let's move on to the good stuff. Absolutely. So going into this week, Garbage Bowl number two, our last time to ever play the Oakland Raiders with both teams being under the Oakland and San Francisco monikers. The final time, the final battle of the Bay between the glorious monument that is the San Francisco 49ers and the garbage-ass Oakland Raiders. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, here's the thing. I've talked about this before. I've t- I probably lost every one of my Oakland Raider fans that were listening right now, uh, all seven of them. Here's the thing about the Oakland Raiders is that the Raiders, the the hatred between the Raiders and the 49ers is so the previous generation. It's the baby boomer generation. That is really a baby boomer generation beef. And I'll tell you why. We haven't even played the Raiders in regular season since 2011. Like, I just, I'm just indifferent. I just don't really care. It's like they're in a different conference. They're in a different division. It, it, it doesn't really matter to me the way it mattered, you know, to the baby boomer generation. If you look at the baby boomer, it, even Gen Xers, it's, Gen Xers, it's a little bit, it's a little bit rougher, but it, this is really a baby boomer uh, rivalry. And I'll tell you why it's a baby boomer rivalry. It's a baby boomer rivalry. Man, try saying that fast. It's like a tongue twister. Baby boomer rivalry. The reason it is, is because the Raiders and then the Raiders were good in the 70s. They had another little run in the 80s. The Niners were really competitive in the in the 70s, but could never really get past the Cowboys. The dynasty begins in the 80s. Dwight Clark, the catch. We're going to talk about that a little bit later too, Ray. I forgot we need to talk about that. We 100% need to talk about that. So the uh, a football life is what I'm referring to, the football life documentary. So the Niners have their big run. Raiders and Niners, Raiders are kind of scrappy. They're both really competitive at the same exact time. And so this hatred between these two teams is so deep, but it's really a baby boomer rivalry. Would you, what, do you, what do you have to say on that? And then we'll, 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 I'll keep going after that. But what do you have to say? Yeah, be, well, I think that's accurate because that's the last time both teams were relevant at the same time. Whereas the Raiders have been were relevant. And the last time they were relevant was... Well, a couple years ago, they had 12 wins, but, and they were looking like they were going to return to relevancy, but that obviously has gone south real quick. But before that, it was Rich Gannon in 2002, losing to Tampa Bay. And other than that, you know, they've kind of been, they haven't really been relevant at all. Whereas the Niners sustained themselves for 20 straight years. They had a short stint with Jeff Garcia and we had, uh, you know, a three-year run with Jim Harbaugh, and now we're trying to get back to it. So clearly, more success on our side. Clearly, more sustainability in terms of relevancy, uh, relevancy to the to the tournament, of course. And so that's why I think I was like, yeah, baby boomer is a good way to put it because anyone who grew up in that era knows that the teams were really, really good during that time. Same for the Giants and A's. Um, so it was a really, it was a very a very evenly divided, unless you grew up watching both teams, but it was pretty evenly divided if you were one or the other because the A's and Giants were competitive in the 80s and the Niners and Raiders were both competitive in 70s and also in the 80s. So, but now, you know, the rivalry is kind of, it's kind of just like, it's more of a spiritual rivalry, like a shell of itself. Like, oh, okay, like they used to be really competitive and now it's just kind of a, tradition let's just keep the rivalry tradition going you know someone always gets beat up with some either niner fans beating up niner fans or raiders fans beating up niner fans or vice versa you know there's always some some of that crap i saw a couple videos of it after the fact yeah it's definitely a baby boomer rivalry it's not really our our rivalry it's a baby boomer rivalry so having said that this was our last chance to face off with them being a bay area team this was an uh, our last chance and then what happens? C.J. Beathard 
goes down again before the game happens. And here's the thing. I'm going to say this because we talked about it at during preseason. Uh, and I think I have to give all the credit in the world to our third unofficial member, he who refuses to come on the gold cast. He only likes to tell us information. that, that He loves us to spout his name. He's like Kaiser Soze on this is uh, Rudy Solis Jr., our esteemed father, who loved Nick Mullins in preseason, thought he looked great, thought he he should get more looks, thought that he had he had the basic skill set to possibly usurp C.J. Beathard and was waiting for the opportunity, and then the opportunity arises, and Nick Mullins has the starting opportunity. C.J. Beathard goes down. We released Tom Savage, which gives, you know, gave a lot of people the indication that, you know, CJ Beathard was healthy enough to at least go, but it sounds like maybe perhaps Kyle Shanahan wanted to take a look at young Nick Mullins. And he did. And Nick Mullins lit it up. He I'm gonna t- I wanna talk a little bit about the intangibles and of course Raymond, the greatest fan in the game, he's gonna give us the breakdown of what he saw on the X's and O's. But he I think as far as the intangibles, the things that I really liked about Nick Mullins was the leadership, the fire, the confidence. Uh, and we saw the we saw flashes of this in preseason. And if you didn't see it in preseason, it's all good. Uh, this is why we always at the Goldcast are always in firm support of watching preseason because we saw flashes of this and we all talked about it. I think Raymond and I's big hesitation was the same, was that, well, he looked great. He looked calm confident, poised in the pocket against third and fourth stringers. And that was our big, our big hesitation. And then, you know, I both had even said, you know, to various people throughout the last several weeks, you know, well, you know, you know, if he's not starting, there's got to be a reason, you know, they see a lot more footage of him than we do. And not like a lot of people were clamoring for him. uh, But you and I were definitely people that had saw, saw talent. And then he gets this starting opportunity, Raymond, and he delivers, I think, San Francisco needs to hold their horses a little bit, and we're going to talk about that in a second. But I want to hear now what you saw in your journey through the game. Well, I saw a team. This is a battle of who's who's worse. Is it the Niners or is it the Raiders? Because the Raiders have only won one game. We've only won one game. We've lost a couple games that we should have won. And I haven't watched the Raiders season, so I don't know how close or or, or far they were from – games from their their losses this year but i know that our record does not reflect you know it there's talent clearly missing that could get us over the hump of those close games and we're you know about a handful or so players from getting there perhaps a little bit less than a handful and you know because one pass rusher could make the world of a difference on that line but what i was hoping is like okay there it's a short trip both teams coming off of a short trip to to the that was the other reason why I thought we should beat Arizona. I was like, they've got so much turmoil over there and injuries too, and they, they had recently fired their offensive coordinator. I was like, there's there's an and you know uh, what's his name Vince Young is there was the offensive coordinator that got promoted the week before. So I was like, we should have this in the bag defensively and offensively, but it just didn't work out. But anyway, so going to the Raiders game, I thought well. It's a Thursday night game. You're coming off of a loss. You have to. You have a short turnaround. You have four days to prepare, and you have to travel to us. We had we got to stay at our home and play a Thursday night game, which is great. The home team always has the advantage for a Thursday night game in terms of preparation. Doesn't always work out that way, but um, I think it it it's something you would any coach would want. You'd want to be the home team for a Thursday night host game. So I was like, all right, well we've got. We've got the advantage here, so we have to take advantage of this. It, it could be a close stinker of a game. I just hope that we edge them. So the fact that we got what we got, which was a complete domination in all faucets of the game, was just like – it was like a Christmas present. I was like, wow, this is December. This feels so, this feels so generous of, of, a, of a viewing uh, pleasure. So Nick Mullins was fantastic the whole time. Nearly perfect. Had a almost a near perfect passer rating. He's only 16 for 22, 262 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, did not give up the ball. So uh, granted, this is a we we 
the this game is a reflection of us taking advantage of an inferior team and us it doesn't mean we are this good but it's a combination of us being better than how we've played in the past and obviously being better than the raiders but also a combination of playing a team that really doesn't have all their you know doesn't have all their car doesn't have all their shit together you know Derek cars running for his life uh, once again, another year of doing that. They don't have a pass rush much like us. They gave up Khalil Mack earlier in the year for a bunch of draft picks. On the you know, on the other hand, we finally were able to take advantage of a struggling offensive line, something we should have done against Arizona. So I'm not sure where, where the pressure went that game. But, you know, Cassius Marsh had a huge game, two and a half sacks, two TFLs, TFL meaning tackle for a loss for those of you that are not keeping up. Solomon Thomas finally had a sack and a TFL. Dakota Watson coming off IR, that was huge. He had a one and a half sack and a TFL. Uh, Mark Zicho, is it Ziocha, he had a TFL. DeForest Buckner had another sack in a TFL. He, if he gets up to eight sacks or more, he'll go to the Pro Bowl because for an interior lineman to have a high sack count is really, really difficult to do. And the one sack that DeForest Buckner did get was was when he got double teamed. He actually split the double team to get that sack. So incredibly impressive. He continues to get better. If we get someone on the edge, so if we get someone on the edge to compliment him, he will become our next Justin Smith and can even be more dominant than Justin Smith. John, Justin Smith was a late bloomer. He played in Cincinnati for a lot, like eight years or something, then finished out his last five years with us and went to Pro Bowls every single year. Uh, going back to the game, Ronald Blair had a sack in a TFL. So lots of TFLs, lots of sacks. So we stuffed their running game. They couldn't run against us. They couldn't pass very effectively against us. Um, this was uh, Derek Carr threw – Derek Carr had the same exact completions and almost the same exact attempts as Nick Mullins, 16 for 21 versus Mullins, 16 for 22. The difference, 171 yards, zero touchdowns, zero picks. Nick Mullins was the exact opposite, 262, three touchdowns, zero picks, as I mentioned earlier. So this is a complete inverse. They only scored three points. They looked good on the opening drive, and I was already starting to feel a little bit nervous on the opening. I was like, oh, man, Oakland's just driving with ease right here. But then they kind of fumbled once they got with inside the, the 20 or the 30 and then settled for a field goal. And then after that, it was just all Niners all day long. You know, great passing. It, Nick Mullins got away with like two two passes that could have been that, that better teams will actually pick off. So he needs to look at the tape and – make sure that that gets cleaned up for next game because I think at this point he's earned the start next week. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, you think he would, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to start. I think that's the consensus now. Uh, for, from, yeah, from everything I've been reading, he's he's definitely getting the start in, uh, in next week's uh, Garbage Bowl number three. He's definitely getting the start. From everything I've, I've heard, that's what I've heard. He's getting the start for sure. So... Hopefully that's uh, hopefully that's the case. I think he's earned it. I think he's deserved it. But go ahead, continue as you were saying. Yeah, I think he earned it too. That CJ Beathard, for whatever reason, holds onto the ball. He takes to let the he's, he's a little he's a little too patient in the pocket, waiting for guys to get open. I think he's he's waiting for guys to get open, and then when they are open, he's not seeing the field fast enough to make to to thread those needles. If you, if you guys understand what I'm saying here. So I think there's openings. I think there's been more openings than, I mean, I, I think, A, the receivers are, do struggle to get open in general. However, I think there have been moments, numerous moments, where receivers have been open, but CJ's missed them. And then there's other instances where CJ waits for that receiver to get open on a second route. And by the time you get to that phase in the play, your offensive line has already lost the ability to sustain the pass rush. And so you have to yield a sack. So you have two choices. You can either throw the ball away out of bounds or you can throw it, you know, near a receiver in the ground. So CJ doesn't have the instincts to really do that effectively. Nick Mullins showed in the, in the few instances where he actually took pressure, there's very few instances, by the way, zero sacks from the Raiders. So, but the couple that I did see, he seemed to have the wherewithal to get rid of the ball and A, avoid the sack, and B, avoid the turnover. But again, again, we're just looking at one game, one game against a really crappy team. So when the Giants come into town, we're at home again. So again, we have the comfort advantage of being at home. Nick Mullins will have the comfort of not being able, not having to travel. 
and study an opponent. He'll have, he'll get to stay here and study an opponent. And this we're basically going to be facing the Raiders of the NFC East. That's exactly who the Giants are. So I expect a similar performance like this game against the Giants because they're in a similar situation. The only difference is their pass rush is a little bit better than the Raiders. But other than that, and they have a decent running back in the rookie Saquon Barkley. But but other than that, we should handle them just just as convincingly as we handled the Raiders. This is a team that that has a lot of inner turmoil. They're not gelled. They have a new coach. They have injuries. They're they're one of the worst offenses and defenses in the NFL. Very similar situation to the Raiders. Only they're in the NFC East, or the or I think the NFC East. Yeah, NFC East. So either way. I expect the results to be very similar. We have a chance to really gain some nice momentum and really gain some steam as we head into the latter half of the season. Definitely, I agree 100%. I also agree with what you said right before you went into your uh, assessment of the New York Giants game coming up this week. It's only one game. Everyone needs to calm down. You know, I, I hey, here's my favorite part, and I think this is the best part. This is the best part, and I don't really hear people talk about this too often when, when, when they're listening to sports, is that one of the best feelings on a Sunday when you're sitting to watch football is when your team is done and they've kicked ass and they've won a game. There's nothing more relaxing than to just sit down and go, I'm just going to watch the rest of the games and just enjoy football. There's nothing hanging over your head. You don't feel shitty about the Niners or how bad they did or you know sometimes the Niners lose and I'm just like screw football I don't want to watch football for the rest of the day this sucks you know and I'm like I'll just turn it off or I'll you know if, if they're the late game I'll be like I don't want to watch the five o'clock game I don't give a crap anymore I don't give a shit I don't want to watch it and there's a nice feeling and no one talks about this there's a relaxing feeling that comes from your team winning am I right 49er faithful gold cast nation you know what we're talking about right you get that feeling you're like ah this feels good. Life is good. 49ers are good. This was a good game. We won by a good amount of points. That's how it feels. And that is what, it was a great feeling, and that was a great feeling, and we should take that away no matter what. Ray, you, you brought up the number one most important point. The Raiders are even worse than us. They are in trouble. God, I wish I, wish I could get onto a Ouija board and summon Old Man Davis. So he can come onto this gold cast. He's one of our old hosts for those of you. A lot of, most of you know who Old Man Davis is. But for those who are some of our newer listeners. Old Man Davis. One of the original co-hosts of the gold cast. Way back in the Wayback Machine of like 2015. Maybe even earlier. It's been a long time. But the it'd be great to summon him to you know call the Ouija board. And have him come back from the grave and talk. Unfortunately, I don't even think he has been... Even from the grave, I don't think he's been watching the Raiders. But it uh, it would have been great to talk to him about this game and to talk a little about where how much trouble the Raiders are in because I think you, we could do we could do seven podcasts on just the Raiders. Unfortunately, this is the gold cast. This isn't the silver and black cast, or else we would talk about that. But uh, yeah, the Raiders are in a lot of trouble and they're a garbage team. And this is important to remember: they are a garbage team. This is a garbage team, and this is a team that is in worse shape than us. This is why this is the garbage bowl, the garbage bowls, the garbage bowls. This is garbage bowl number two, and now we have the garbage bowl number three. And then we have a break, and then we go against the Tampa Buc- Buccaneers. And you know what? I know that fits magic. I know what's happening. I, I'm keeping abreast of everything going on, but I still think that is still the garbage bowl number four. It's, you know, even though they're frisky. That game is garbage. So let's see what Nick Mullins does against the New York Giants. Let's see how, you know, garbage bowl number three goes. And then we'll take a break, and then we'll come back, and we'll see how he does against the uh, the Buccaneers. Uh, or, or affectionately, how we used to call them back in the day, the Yuccaneers. But, Raymond, let's move on. It's time for some playoff predictions, baby. So... At this point in the season, Raymond and I like to play a little game. We like to nominate teams that are for sure out and then nominate teams that are for sure in. So, Raymond, let's start. Name two teams 
in both one in the NFC, one in the AFC, that you are for sure out. And then name two teams that are for sure in. The floor is yours. Well, I'm going to say the Raiders are out in the AFC and the Giants are out in the NFC. Let's get the really shitty ones out of the picture. (laughs) Okay. And then for sure in, I'm going to say, I mean, this is kind of an easy an easy pick here. For sure in, we have Chiefs and Rams. And I think those are going to be two teams to watch definitely in a tournament. For sure. So I want to get the easy ones out of the way because in the hunt and wild card, you know, the in the hunt is going to be the most interesting thing as far as the playoff picture is concerned. And wild card, you know, wild card is not solidified yet, but we have, you know, projections. 100%. Yep, I agree. So uh, in the spirit of of the season, I will say, and since you gave those teams, I'll mix it up a little bit um, so we can keep it fresh. I will say the Arizona Cardinals, because screw that team. They're out. For sure they're out. I can't believe we got swept by the Cardinals. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, Cardinals are out for sure. And then on the AFC side, I will agree. I also say the Oakland Raiders are out. On the NFC side, you said, or the AFC, NFC, on the inside, you said Chiefs are in, Rams are in. I agree 100%. I'll go their biggest follies. I will go the Patriots are for sure in, and the New Orleans Saints are for sure in. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Boom. So, Awesome. All right. So last but not least, and then we got to go. Did you get a chance to see Dwight Clark, A Football Life? I unfortunately did not. I saw a brief snippet because when we were on the phone and I came home, I caught it like already halfway through. So I sat and watched a little bit, but then I kind of didn't want to ruin it. I wanted to see it from beginning to end. So I stopped. But I know you watched the whole thing. I did watch the whole thing. Here's what we're going to do. Watch it this week because I want to talk about the whole thing, but I want you to have seen it. So we're going to hold – all I'm going to say is this. I'll give my spoiler-free like two-sentence review. It was fucking amazing, and I really loved it. I'll give a third sentence. It made me cry a little bit, and it was a great – it was a beautiful, beautiful documentary – and it touched it touched on a lot of things I wasn't expecting, and I got to learn a lot about Dwight that I that I didn't know, which what I was was which is what I was hoping for. But Raymond, watch it, and then we'll talk about it next week. How's that sound? That sounds good. Okay, and now final final uh, moment of the evening: New York at San Francisco. Raymond, tell me off the top of your head, what do you think the Vegas line is going to be? If you were to take a guess, my friend. I would say Niners by six. Ooh. Well, I agree that's probably where it should be, but Vegas doesn't trust us. They don't trust Nick Mullins just yet, and they have set the line at two and a half points. Now, Raymond, the question is, do you take that bet? No. I think the, this, by all accounts, this should be another game where the Niners show out exactly as they did against the Raiders and take advantage of a team that's broken. This is a horse that's down, and when a horse is down, you got to kick it. And that horse just happens to be New York this week. So we're going to kick the New York horse while it's down. That's what we have to do. (laughs) (laughs) I've never once heard you describe it that, you know, when a horse is down, you got to kick it. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to kick that horse while it's down. (laughs) Just call it like I see it. That was great. <laughs> really well done. <laughs> yeah, really well done. Really well done. Uh, I agree. I think you take the over on San Francisco, New York at San Francisco. Take the over on two and a half. Raymond, before we go, why don't you let them know, where can they find you? You can find me on Twitter at Ray Solis, and you can find me on Instagram at Ray Solis one And you can find me on Twitter at Rudy Solis 3RD and Instagram at Rudy Solis 3. 
We will be talking about the Warriors. The Warriors intro has been ridiculous, but we have just been so deep on Niners. We will be coming back to the Warriors, but what an amazing start. We're super happy. They've been killing it. So we will come back to them, Raymond and I. We promise we will focus on this a little bit later, but right now we've just been... It's 49er season, baby. This is the gold cast. This is what you guys love the most, so this is what we're the most invested in right now. Anyways, we will touch back on that. But before then, so concludes another edition of the gold cast. We are the boys of the Bay. I'm your host, Rudy Suisa III, and with me is my brother, my co-host. Raymond Salisa the first, baby. Boom! We'll see you next time. Same gold cast time. Same gold cast channel. This is, is the Gold Cast.